again. I am so We're sad. Doing it. Oh, never fucking ends. Uh, hey! We're alive, you're alive, maybe you aren't. We shouldn't take that for granted. Who else is feeling a little bit sick on the inside? Hey, hey, who also is feeling like, oh my god, what is the point of anything? Uh, ah. Well, I mean, I am, but that's because I thought it would be a good idea to eat some really, really, really old MDMA before we started shooting this and then wash it down with some scotch and coffee. So it is just like nonsense in my belly, but I'm almost certain none of that will impinge upon my normal, highly professional delivery. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that that is what got you through the research. I don't know how you're doing. Uh, probably oh, you mean there. them out in TV land? Yeah. Don't say oh TV. TV land, aging myself. Yeah. Um, so I hope you're doing good. We're doing fantastic. <laughs> We're very excited to be back doing another one of these things. And what are we talking about today? I thought that instead of. Um, you know, drowning ourselves in sorrows and looking at like how fucked everything is, we should look at the incredible new language that has evolved around all things pandemic. The way that the pandemic has changed language. Are you down for some like new sick new terms, my friend? Yeah, right. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, right. sure, let's do it. Um, I also thought what would help this time instead of drinking is trying a coffee. So I don't know if that will mix up the vibe, but um, normally we're drunk when we do this. And I think you're on MD, <laughs> I'm gonna have a coffee. Let's see how that... We'll meet in the middle. <laughs> in the middle. The classic middle. Fine. The, yeah, the classic middle. All right. Dancing, 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 dancing. Don't look. Oh, okay. It has to be a surprise to me. All right. So I'm going to like say some terms to you. I want you to have a go at being like defining it and then we're going to discuss. Okay? Mm-hmm. All right. So the... This is the original idea from this is pulled from an article that was in The Guardian talking about the new sort of phrases that came up. I'll put the link here. Um, this is all about sort of like new terms that were invented slash that we're all sort of very familiar with now because of coronavirus. Now, are these sort of technical terms that we've become familiar with that we didn't have to previously? Uh, or are these uh, affectionate colloquialisms you know, that we've used to kind of process the nastiness we're going through. Oh uh, my god, a little column you know, A, a little column B. Like a cute nickname for your enemies at war, like how they used to Do say you... Charlie or Jerry or something like that. Oh geez, okay, well yeah, I mean it's a little of column A, a little column B, but a little less racist I guess. Although, I mean, in some ways, mm, racist, so yeah. <laughs> I think if you're shooting someone, <laughs> worrying about uh, racially vilifying them at the same time seems like a drop in the ocean. I think Look, like, I don't know anyone who got shot who's like, ah, oh, these bullets are very unpleasant. But at the same time, I feel like calling me Jerry is reductive and look, offensive. Um, this is probably never going to make the cut, but I don't want to get into it about how they <laughs> use those phrases and ideologies to, like, racist ideologies. To make to it other. okay to murder people. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> like, that's the problem, isn't it? Like, it's if not that it only at the time. Our government had come up with a charming reductive name for COVID that would encourage us to murder it. I Maybe mean, it did. It we'll did. find out on that list. Let's find out. All right. So the first term I want to bring down is a pretty controversial one, and I have seen it used in popular language. Um, instead of saying lockdown, people are saying Locky D. Now, you might have heard it in the context of having a little menti B in Locky D, which is like having a little mental breakdown in lock lockdown. So how do you feel about Locky D? I hate it. Why? Partly because <laughs> it makes me think about Mackie D's. What's a which Mackie is uh, it's McDonald's. It's a, it's a charming oh. euphemism for shit food you hate that nuggies. turns into you acid. Hate and nuggies. I hate nuggies. I hate Lucky D. It's look. I'm basically going to spend this whole episode sneering <laughs> because all these cutie nicknames they just remind me of minion memes and basic bitch internet. Do you kind of understand like the? I think I feel like it's like an ironic use of it, and I also feel like the. Cutenization of things is kind of like a way to process it a little bit. Yeah, look, I used to say totes ironically, and then it became a terrible thing that I couldn't stop doing earnestly. So I think all of these sort of cutifications are slippery slopes, and you can very quickly find yourself saying it devoid of the irony that used to protect you. Ultimately, it doesn't really matter. You tell us in the comments below. Oh, I'm drinking again. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, two minutes. <laughs> so. All right, so this I want to uh, set up. So basically, there's a beautiful... A beautiful satirical device, a pun to mock the critique and the glacial pace of Scott Morrison's vaccine rollout. It's the stroll out. Oh, yes. How do you feel about that? Um, I do like it. I don't know if I'd characterize the way this has been done as a stroll. It's not, um, it's not a race, I, is it? No, it, it reminds me, it's, it's more like Austin Powers trying to do the three-point turn in the tight tunnel <laughs> than anything <laughs> else, which I also wouldn't characterize as a stroll out. But, uh, you know, it, it is sticking it to out. that fat cunt, so I'll let it pass. 
It does seem like I don't know which journalist came up with it, but obviously they're extremely proud of themselves and therefore it's like really being ruminated like, upon about how brilliant it is. It's probably like Scotty from marketing where uh, Scott, Scott Morrison tried to say, oh, this has come from the Labour Party, whereas it was actually a gag from the Batuta Advocate. It's so always... I suspect this has come from the world of satire as well. Let's be honest, this is all the Batuta Advocate, and to them we tip our proverbial hats. Cheers, Clance. Clance? Clancy. He's oh. like the main writer guy. <laughs> We're on first name basis. I know his first name, and he doesn't have... I thought you just stuffed up the me. word cunts. <laughs> She's like, oh yeah, right in the clamps. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right, this one you may be familiar with because we see it all the fucking time and it makes you want to slap people in the face. It's dick nose. And it's the idea of people wearing their masks kind of like down here and just having their, their dick nose hanging out. I always think of the um, Spirit of the Way Baba Yaga witch, which has got the giant <laughs> nose. It's just, I mean, when I'm being weird and anal about other people following the rules, I'm aware that it is a manifestation of my own multitudinous mental illnesses that I'm obsessed with sort of making other people CONFORM! But people do look like fucking idiots with their nose out. And like with the- Do like, they look like dick noses? Like I guess if you don't believe in the coronavirus or you don't believe that it's aerosol based or whatever, then I guess, you know, wearing the mask Wrong is a form of protest. It's like adhering in the bare minimal capacity so you can't be fined while also saying I don't think this is real. But the people who do think the coronavirus is a real thing and then wear their mask under their nose, you understand how barriers <laughs> work, right? And you understand that I these are all breathing holes, you fuckhead. So it is, I just, uh, it's mainly old people I see doing it. No, bitch, we saw And you shouldn't want to punch old people in the face, but uh, you guys call yourself the greatest generation, you can take a punch in the nose. I do think we actually saw a person who was in maybe their 20s when we went, like, when we realized that Honorary lockdown was coming, person. Uh, they had the dick nose, and it's just, you see it, and you're like, what the fuck is wrong with you? I mean, I don't, of course, you know, we're hardly the data kings around here, so I don't oh, have I'm any, data king. I, I don't have any I'm data, data that I can call up on the number of actual we will. We'll put it here. disease transmissions that have occurred from fuckheads who didn't dick wear nose. their mask properly. Um, and, you know, the other thing that makes me loathe to be too anal about it, even though it does look ridiculous, anal. is the... <laughs> Yeah, is um, the fact that, you know, if someone has coronavirus, there's so much more than just wearing a mask. There's like, how do they take it on and put it off? Where are they taking it on and putting it off? If you're just sort of fucking around with it all the time, you compromise its capacity to keep the germs in. Yeah. So, you know, in many ways, people wearing it under their nose is a drop in the ocean anyway. And if they are terribly ill, I don't know that there that's going to be um, a difference maker. a psychological impact from wearing the mask, even if incorrectly, it's that you're, it's, it's a, present prominent reminder of the fact that we're in a pandemic yes so i think there's an element like even if you're a dick nose i mean it's fucked but you're at least doing the pretense of that we're in a pandemic yeah and but but are you normalizing it and making it more comfortable for other people to adhere to whilst wearing mandates when i don't know i think we wrong? should normalize slap and dick noses yeah, i mean yeah, they okay. say that violence is not the solution so i i probably shouldn't be in charge of so that. all those people complaining about wearing a, a, a mask at least your nose isn't gushing blood all right, the next one we have, I'm gonna say this one out loud and then you can kind of tell me what you think it means because I actually hadn't come across this and I feel like I am gorged on this one. Info gorged. <laughs> infobesity. Do you know what that is? Have you heard that in the wild? Have you heard that out and about in the wild? No, no. In fact, I had never heard of infobesity until I uh, snuck a sneaky look at these notes <laughs> before, <laughs> before we started recording. Shall I'm I like, read that one out? Yeah, sure. Like, right. Oh, well, let me guess, let me guess. Okay. Is it to do with, I don't know, like gorging yourself on information and becoming overwhelmed by it? No! Yes! <laughs> <laughs> yes. Bam! All right. It's capturing the information overload, particularly to the perfect storm of the 24 hour news cycle and pandemic with hourly changing data points. Uh, the journalist who wrote the original article says that they love the economy of language conveying the multitude of meaning here, suggesting that the overload is as bad for you as gorging yourself on food to the point of a health crisis. I think that's ah, great. That's this, is, this, this resonates because I try to avoid any information whatsoever and then I binge the information and then I try to get as drunk as possible to purge it from my mind because I have and info eating disorder. I wonder how fat activists or like fat positive people feel about the linking of obesity with negative connotations there. Anyway, that's a sidebar for a whole another conversation. But anyway, anything else on uh, info obesity? Yes, if you're uh, deeply upset by the mention of any language surrounding eating disorders, let us know in the comments below. <laughs> That's not good. <laughs> I didn't say it was good, right. I just said let us know. The I'm just trying to find proof of life out there. <laughs> I just want to feel like... I just want to know people are watching. Alright, the next one I want to uh, bring up is um, 
it like this is, seems like a very american term and a very like i don't know middle class thing but the quarantini quarantini is that just like quarantine arenos and no it's else? like a oh it's a drink martini. oh it's, um, i think it's like i think it sums up that you're like you're in quarantine or you're in iso or you're in lockdown and you are drunk as fuck <laughs> It's a charming way to uh, euphemize your alcohol abuse yeah. while locked in the house. Okay, cool, got it. Do you remember early on in the pandemic they did, and we'll put the graphs here if I can find them, but like there was like the alcohol. Oh, when they realized that. Um, so everyone's like, oh. It's, um, I mean, it does make you appreciate the fact that uh, we're one of those countries where there isn't like a whole bunch of gun ownership and stuff like yes. that. Because I imagine the it's. Uh, I did actually read about the um, gun crime rate uh, soaring in multiple places where children and kids and youths don't have a lot to do. So I imagine that that's pretty bad. Yes, but I don't know how many of those people are shooting themselves in their own home. Oh, well, no. Uh, that's right, well, out and about. You took it like, technically, <laughs> technically, these people are breaking lockdown down by going out and shooting each other. I'm talking about, you know, more like um, the, the Romanian winters where people are locked down with just their homebrewed spirits and I'm their thinking guns like a for winter. I'm sort of like shooting your own wife. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's tell. it. That's a great game. What's the thing like the Russian roulette? I, I think it's lots of, you don't have the guts to shoot me. Go on. And she's like, I fucking will die. You won't. And then, you know, um, uh, You're literally blam. triggering me. I hate this so much. <laughs> it's so upsetting. Well, uh, if you don't like it, shoot me. No, we don't have a gun. That's I don't not going to happen. I don't want to do that. And I love you so much so you know oh, oh my thank God. you darling all right so the next two i i want to like lump together because i feel like they're extremely common lumpy. yeah like <laughs> really fucking lumpy yeah. it's iso and it's rona um so iso is uh, is that more for the isolation we're all experiencing or is it specifically referring to people who are in iso as they wait for their test results i think results? it's the general I don't know why we have this many, but we, we, ISO we, specifically. We, no, but people who, like, there are, I think there's something like this amount of, of Victorians who are currently in ISO because they're tier one or tier two contacts, right? So I think it's like the, it's the, it's, but it's, it's that general trend of shortening. We don't have time to say isolation. We've got to say ISO. What is that yes. about? Bottle shop. Who has time to say bottle shop? Bottle it's bottle -o. Bottle -o. Even though it's the same number of syllables and we're not really saving any time. Yeah. What is with our cultures? I mean, it's, I think it's across multiple cultures, but we do not have time to say the full word. We will not. I will not. Well, I mean, we, uh, we do venerate uh, irreverent you think it's about being uh, It is a bit. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's, you, you reduce is that it. why the Rona? Like, it, and the, the Rona, Rona yeah. can't really hurt you because it's Rona time. Remember that whole song? It's Corona time. What an excellent time. It's Corona time. All right. The next ones are a little more political. It's the Berejiklian stand and the Danistan. It's the... Right. It's oh, it's the, Gulag Gladys and Dictator yeah, Dan. It's, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It's on the weird... Um, I don't know, politicization. I mean, obviously it's political, but it's the it's the it's the pulling in of the inference that somehow we are in Afghanistan or some other country that I guess we presume to have extremely strict rules it's, and then applying it to our state leaders. It's a very like who came up with that? Where is that from? And it's so like blankistan. It reminds <laughs> me of uh, we just watched that um, four part Resident Evil sci-fi oh. story, a uh, CG Don't animation tell people thing that, extremely that they put on Netflix. <laughs> it's absolutely stupid. You should Holy check it out. Shit. It's like do you love Leon? It's like an hour and a Get half involved. of terrible PS2 Resident Evil cutscenes. PS1, sorry. Ashley. Um, yeah, Leon. And uh, <laughs> but they're, they're all fighting over a made-up city that Dumbest I cannot stand. remember. That it's it's like Blankistan or Blankmania or something like that. But don't you think? a very othering like it's a very white people thing of like oh a stand that's a we that's have freedom else. not like in blankistan yeah and if yeah. you don't like it you can be so insuckable in blankistan yeah 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 when it really is, you it live is in like, like one that. of the most sort of like authoritarian like sort of crushed sort of like yes um, yeah yeah they're, they're, tapey. they're authoritarian rulers where turbans and ours work for google it's not really a huge difference really yeah you can't yeah, yeah. install your own electricity so yeah you're not in you charge live of in shit. victoria yeah. stan i guess i don't know um wouldn't let me wire my own house it's bullshit the next term is corona coaster and i think that re reflects the up and downiness of the coronavirus and how it throws you through a roller coaster as our great mate ronan keating once said life is a roller coaster you've just got to ride it baby oh, roller coaster it's uh it is like a roller coaster the whole pandemic because uh we're being run by opportunistic carnies who smell of shit and vomit so i just want to throw like pennies at them or whatever <laughs> um just a note gonna switch drinks so don't 
continuity get up my asshole. Alright, the next term is the before times. Now I thought, I mean... The four fours. <laughs> I kind of thought that that was more... I don't know, we've been calling it the before times like ironically as if this was a super sort of post-apocalyptic um, are we in like Snowpiercer? Is it the before times? Whatever. Like, I do you use that phrase colloquially with colloquially, which I cannot say. Colloquially, with your uh, no, no. Like, uh, do you remember life before the event? Do not think about the event. The event. The event. Yes. It, I mean, it is all a bit like that. Like, I remember is, before though. the fall. Uh, I mean, people used to talk about 9/11 like that. Um, well, I think that was a fucking you know generation defining thing. There's actually a debate going on, shout out to the Reddit of Millennials, about like, if you don't remember 9-11, then you are not a Millennial. And there is a <laughs> <laughs> There's a debate going on, and I, I, I honestly thought what was coming next was, and people are saying, uh, 9-11, what's the big deal? Yeah, <laughs> so, is that the debate? Like, no, no, no. That... It, it was more just like the, the definition of the term It was 20 years ago. Move on! It was the definition of the term of Millennial they were suggesting was all to do with whether you remember 9-11, like, with your own brain or not. As a thing, or whether you just I, remember it I as don't get into that debate, but I guess it's interesting in terms of like framing this. Like, I think sh for sure there's going to be a division of people who don't remember before this pandemic. I guess it really depends on, you know, it's this idea of back to normal on the other side and whether that's a mad pipe dream and what it, it will be COVID instead normal. It is. Is, a, is an ongoing rolling adjustment based on whatever the fuck's oh, going Angel, on virus Oh Angel, we're going to do a whole fucking episode about how we ain't going back to normal, but What the does the future times, look like? Fuck! Ah, you splashing me. Sorry, All sorry. Right. The next thing I think is interesting is coronials, quarantines, and corona babies. And that's, uh, you know, babies being conceived, people are cooped up at home. Coronial sounds a bit dead people-ish. That the um, coronial, a coronial makes me think of, yeah, coro yeah, coronary and <laughs> coroners and shit. Quarantines, I think, is pretty pretty good. Quarantines, uh, But it yeah. does, I think there is like an evolution, like obviously that will take some time, but there will be an evolution of language. Hopefully, I pray for you people, like not to a god because that doesn't exist, but like I hope that your whole lives aren't defined by this event. I hope this ends up being just five, Some three weird shit your parents years. went through yeah. when you were a kid. Yeah. You amazing. understand these kids can't understand. This mean, is for obviously people digging up these videos ten years lives are going to be defined by the collapse of the fucking like ecological systems and stuff so you'll probably be defined as like the end of times babies but hopefully you're not defined as corona teens or whatever the fuck like that fucking side sucks. note if uh you are god and you exist and you're watching this let us know in the comments below i would be so shocked <laughs> wouldn't you like wouldn't my oh. face be i'd be Red. stoked the load off my shoulders if i could actually manually let the light of christ into my life that imagine would be though the if god is real knees. but it is the christian god and you're like oh Every choice I made was like the opposite. Oh. All right, so the next kind of lot is sort of like a grouping of terms that I feel like summarizes how we've all had to become experts in medical terminology in general. That's things like sort of like social distancing, flattening the curve, what mRNA is, what RNA technology is, epidemics, pandemics, what the fuck the who actually does, um, how much they like rock. <laughs> wow. Oh my god. Get out of here but how much do you think that like uh this pandemic has forced you to kind of come to grips with some epidemiological terms that you have never had to i mean i didn't even wash my hands before this like it's made me understand so much more about germs. oh this has validated <laughs> all of my obsessive hand washing uh, <laughs> but at the same time it's collided with my obsessions about environmental waste and single-use items and stuff like that. So it's turned me into a wonderful ball of anxiety. But uh, all these terms, I've always fancied myself a bit clever, no evidence to actually prove that. So I was aware of some of these terms in advance. Really? Um, but you knew hearing, like social distancing? Um, no, but I knew about like fomites and shit like that. Uh, because again, I'm a bit germ obsessed. Uh, so get in. <laughs> get in. <laughs> yes. uh, but poor, so you know, it's, that's how it works. Howard Hughes was eccentric, I'm just weird. Um, so I had heard of some of these, but it is still interesting to hear it normalized and mainstreamed uh, and stuff yeah. like that. But it's kind of like that whenever anything sort of blows up, you know, a whole bunch of technology comes up. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah. everyone became an expert on how hot it has to be to melt steam be steel beams very quickly. Stem beams. Stem beams. <laughs> Stems. So, if you have any excellent terms that you think that have been invented because of the pandemic, put them in the comments below. Also, can we say that uh, being a tiny baby uh, channel is like, um, it's incredible, thank you. I think there's a hundred of you now. Which oh is my god! And at least four of you are coming back on a routine basis and haven't just forgotten about clicking subscribe, so wicked. Yeah, so if you want to like tell a friend about this show or like uh, share us on a 
platform that you Look, use. Look, this will probably get over with any sort of lefty shithead, so yeah. Unless like they us. are into crystals and then maybe they Well, we don't rag on crystals too much. Uh, I mean, you know, could you make a crystal skull? Could anyone? Could anyone. Um, yeah, uh, language. Funny old thing. Do you reckon if the pandemic goes away quickly, all these like like all these terms will fall out of use, just like, like big dick bureau, energy did bureau. and stuff like that? I think honestly, it's gonna come down to how long this fucking shit sticks around and how many generations are uh, all like forever fomiting. Forever. <laughs> anyway, forever. like and subscribe. Forever. Forever.